So listen, Matt, let's start with your journey. A lot of people will know you anyway, of course, but for those that don't, a little intro to, to, to Mike Ruddock. Yeah, uh, well, you know, Mike Ruddock was born in uh, a place called Blainer. It was a little Welsh Valley town. Um, you know, I grew up with the coal tips all around me, um, would slide down the coal tips and jump the local river, which was bright red from uh, the local steelworks, putting all the, mm. you know, sort of byproducts into the into the river. Uh, we used to call it the River Stinky, and I would uh, jump that uh, to uh, test my ability, uh, athletic ability, and, and just play the freedom, you know, the freedom we had in a valley town. And we said that was in 1966, the Aberfan disaster. I'm sure a lot of people would have seen that. It's horrendous, you know, where the, the coal tip slid down onto a, a local school, um, wiping out a generation of, of school children. And, uh, you know, it's so devastating really. And that hit the valley towns really hard. So, you know, growing up in a valley town, um, it was a tough place to be, I guess, but we never knew that. We, uh, you know, had an outside toilet, no central heating. We used to, you know, look at, uh, uh, my comics or books under the blanket shivering at night with my torch um, but you know loved the freedom of the valleys uh, played rugby at school um, and you know probably that was you know my strength academically I was uh, probably in the bottom half of the class uh, to say the least so uh, you know the the rugby really was was something I had a great passion for and growing up in the valleys at that time the tribalism of Welsh rugby you know we were sort of uh, born and bred to, to sort of hate the next village and want mm. to beat them in the rugby matches and you know following the great Welsh rugby teams of the 70s um, and seeing all my heroes there but even my village team was they were heroes to me uh, I got capped for the Welsh schoolboys uh, won the Welsh youth uh, cup with my village team Blainer you know we produced a lot of really good players for, for such a small town and uh, most of the players from my area went down to the east side of, uh, of Wales to play rugby mm. uh, for one of the teams there, like Newport, uh, or you know, in the valleys where clubs like Pony Pool were a famous club at that time. But I got asked to go down west. I was the first one really to go west uh, from uh, the South Wales valleys there. And I used to do a 100 miles round trip to play rugby for Swansea. And Swansea, you know, at that time, or when I was growing up, certainly. Swansea was a destination that was very exotic. It was my summer <laughs> holidays. We were like, yeah. I guess, pit ponies. We came out to the valleys for two weeks a year to see the sea. And my parents would bring me down to Swansea. We'd camp out for two weeks or get a caravan uh, for two weeks and, and, and enjoy the sunshine and, and the sea and then back up to the valley towns, you know? Uh, so suddenly the thoughts of going to Swansea two or three times a week to train mm. after work and, and play was was challenging and daunting, but it was also very exciting. And I got to play with some fantastic rugby players, uh, played for the Wales rugby, well, the B team, the second team, made the national squad, but was never quite good enough to play for the first team. Uh, I blame the selectors, I thought I was brilliant. And for anybody who didn't see me play, uh, I never missed a tackle. Uh, I was fantastic. <laughs> but for some reason, the selectors didn't think so. Um, so, uh, I got injured then, I had an industrial accident when I was 25, 26, uh, 26 actually I think, um, got knocked off a ladder uh, while working for the electricity board um, and that sort of, you know, by accident threw me into coaching, you know, as I was trying to um, get back to some sort of level of fitness I went running with my village team, you know, I tried and join in a little bit of training without the contact, uh, the coach there asked me to help out and before I knew it I started coaching. I uh, started a coaching journey, uh, did my coaching badge, coaching sort of uh, courses in Swansea as it turned out again and then ended up coaching Swansea and progressing through until I ended up coaching the national team. So, you know, that's been my journey. Uh, uh, people say I've had more clubs than Tiger Woods <laughs> and that's probably right. <laughs> and actually you were made an OBE in 2006, weren't you Mike? I was. Uh, the boys in my village in Blainer said it meant uh, Old Big Ed. Um, just shows the, the quality of our grammar up in that uh, valley. Uh, but yeah, look, I was, uh, was honoured and uh, very privileged. I want to thank the Welsh Rugby Union, I think, who nominated me uh, for the OBE. And uh, it was actually a great day out. And I remember coming out, uh, you know, meeting my idol, Tom Jones, there. We were both fantastic singers. Um, and uh, I remember coming out of uh, Buckingham Palace and the press asked me, 
uh, what did the Queen say to me? And I said, well, she, she said our scrum was very good, but our line it wasn't particularly good. So uh, I remember the guy writing it down, you know, as if uh, the Queen had actually said that. So we had a bit of fun with it as well. <laughs> but no, it was a great honour. Yeah, and, and, and was that a pinnacle for you in, in your career or was it just a sort of a milestone and actually there were other moments with your illustrious career in rugby that you think, oh, no, actually, that was really the, the, the time that you just expected? No, no, I think it was, uh, look, you know, the plaudits are nice, but in coaching, you you know, the old saying, one minute you're, uh, you know, the the, feather, the rooster, the next minute you're feather duster, you know, because, mm. you know, as Frank Sinatra says, right now in April, shot down in May. Um, so, you know, the plot has come along, but you also know that there's a, a kick up the backside from time to time as well in coaching in particular. It's a tough way, you know, doing your living. It doesn't do much for your, for your blood pressure from time to time. But, um, you know, once you're into it and once you're passionate about it and once you're on that journey, uh, building teams and trying to get success and, you know, when you see that sort of unfolded in a very positive manner is very, very rewarding. Mm. So your your mum was Irish, correct? And your dad was Welsh? Yeah, Margaret Mary Carroll uh, from County Clare was my mother. Yeah. Like a lot of Irish families emigrated to uh, England and to the UK for work. Uh, my mother's father and all his family would have been tailors. Um, my mother used to, you know, she was brilliant at making things, you know, when I was a kid growing up, whatever I needed, she'd even cover uh, my car seats on my car, you know, wow. so um, she was fantastic, great lady, and uh, again, the power of the universe, I'll probably talk about that a bit later on, but I always remember saying to my mother, I just sort of, uh, you know, uh, one of the young ladies I'd been dating had finished for me, uh, yet another one had uh, kicked me the touch. <laughs> and I remember being frustrated and saying to my mother that, uh, look, I, I really need to marry someone like you. And lo and behold, I ended up marrying an Irish lady, very much in the mould of my mum, a uh, lovely, lovely lady. And uh, she's been a fantastic person to share the journey with. So uh, big thanks to my wife, Bernie, or Bernadette. Um, but certainly my mother was, you know, very pragmatic, very grounded, uh, would, would, would do anything for you, you know. And, uh, mm. Those sort of values, really, I think, uh, you know, something that, you know, I've admired uh, over the years as I reflect on my upbringing. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, it's so important, those formative years, aren't they, you know, as, as growing up as a family and having that support and encouragement and love from your parents, but equally being very grounded, as you say. Um, how did that help you in your coaching career, do you think? Yeah, well, my dad, I didn't see much of my dad growing up because my dad was, uh, he left the RAF. That's when he met my mother, uh, went into the fire uh, service. He was a sort of a station officer in the local fire uh, service, uh, fire uh, station. Uh, but they were four days on and four days off. So, you know, in those days, he would go out and get a second job. So, uh, mm. you know, he'd be doing all sorts of things really to, uh, you know, to bring a wage in to support four kids. Um, you know, he's very, very supportive and I took from him the value of hard work as well, you know, yeah. so you had that nice blend, see my dad working so hard to make sure we had good opportunities growing up and, you know, good food on the table. As you can see from my physical stature, I'd, I didn't go short of food, so a big thanks to my dad. Um, and, you know, my mother was, was just there, she was like a rock for us, yeah. like I said, with those very supportive values. So I think the blend was, yeah. was really powerful looking back, you know.